stronger because you are higher than any other our god is healer awesome power our god our god the water is turned into wine
You may be seated. Ushers, please come forward. Let's receive the offering this morning. Hey, good morning, church. Good morning. Is it already warm in here? Yes. yes. Who turned the air off? <laughs> What's it on? Can we click it down a notch or so? Maybe push it down to 58? Just kidding. All right. All right, here we go. Let's go to the Lord of Prayer. And uh, then we'll receive the offer. Father. As we bow before your presence this morning, we are but flesh. We are a people who have gone astray in so many ways in that we've all, and I say every person who breathes breath, has sinned. And we've come short of your glory. We've all missed that mark. Father, we bow before you, just humble people. And the reason why is because we know that in our true state, you love us. And not only do you love us, but you gave your life for us. And for that, we are eternally grateful. And by our lives, Lord, we show you that we love you. By our lives and what we say and what we do, Father. We do because we love you. Not because we have to, because we love you. And this is another part of the service, Lord, that we give back to you. Not because we have to, but because we love you. And I pray, God, that you will be honored and glorified by the gifts that we give. May the ministry go forward. May lives be touched. May souls be saved. May the hungry be fed. And the hurting be ministered unto. May the gospel of Jesus Christ go throughout this world. Through what we give today. Thank you, Father. We love you. And it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. All right. As they're receiving the offering, a uh, couple announcements. Uh, we got a church family camping coming up October the 2nd through the 4th. Um, and I'm just going to read this because I didn't read this before. Uh, bring the family for a weekend of camping and fun at the lake. We will be providing dinner Friday night, breakfast, lunch, and dinner Saturday, and breakfast on Sunday morning before we leave for church. Food will cost $3 per person per meal. If you'd like to provide any side dishes, feel free to bring them if you have outdoor games for the kids. For the kids. Uh, <coughs> If you have outdoor games and the kids, for the kids, please bring them as well. Please sign up in the back um, and then know how many meals you will need so we know how much food to prepare. Uh, Joe Lyles is heading this up. Joe, right back there, he's got a sign-up sheet in the back. So if you'd like to go camping, um, you need to in the camping grounds. Do you know the name of that place? It's in Holton, right? It's uh, Prairie State, or Prairie Lake. Prairie Lake. It's in, it's in Holton, Kansas. It's just, as you go down 75 highway past the, there's a little farm store and hardware store in Holton, Kansas. Go on past that. Uh, I think it's maybe a mile and a half down the road. Uh, so you'll see a little green sign on the side of the road that says Prairie Lake that way and you'll You'll turn towards the right, which is towards the east. Yeah, we went and checked it out. It's really nice. It's beautiful, well kept. Electric sites. I mean, it's it's just really nice, nice place. So, uh, hope you and your family will do that. Uh, we're still collecting uh, GIF to go for TNO, so the tub should be out there. Uh, please be advised of that. We got the fall festival coming up for TNO. <laughs> Women on mission are collecting perish non-perishable items for harvesters. I know that. Uh, uh, Melissa will have bags uh, that Harvesters uh, provides us with, and then there's a box in the floor. So next time you go grocery shopping, if you would mind buying some non-perishables for Harvesters. And then laugh your way to a better marriage is coming September 25th and 26th. That's coming up here pretty quick. And uh, you can see the key topics of that seminar. It's a video seminar. We're doing dinner Friday night and then breakfast uh, Saturday morning. And the cost is to uh, provide for the food. If the cost for the food is cheaper, I will be reimbursing everyone back 
uh, uh, finances uh, for that. So uh, the cost is just to take care of the, the food. So I'd love for you to come to that. It's really, really good. Even if you have a great marriage, this is something good to come to. Um, dinner Wednesday night, 6.30. Uh, looks like it's going to be delicious. Please sign up for that. And if this is your first time being here at Lighthouse, we're glad that you're here. I pray that you truly experience God while you worship with us together here. Amen, church? Amen. More than anything else, we truly want you to walk away from this place saying, I met with God today. Not that you heard a great sermon or that you heard great music, but that you met with God. And I pray that is your desire. And I know that God is here and God wants to meet with you as well. But I hope and pray that you can say that as you leave this place. Thank you for being our guest. Fill that out. Drop it in the offering box on your way out. We'd love a record of your visit. But let's continue to stand and, and let's continue to worship our Lord.
trust the sweetest way, but only trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. trust in Jesus' name, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong, in the Savior's love, through the stone, He is known, Lord of Great job this morning. Great job. Um, I don't know why, but I love that song, Amazing Grace. And by Chris Tomlin, my chains are gone. Um, I've been set free, but not me only, but also all of you that have placed your trust in Jesus Christ. Your chains are gone. And you have the victory. And I know some of you are just like, what? What? Are you still asleep? You need some more coffee back there? Okay. Yes. Um, I am very grateful that through Christ we do have victory over many, many things. And I want you to know today that if you're struggling in areas of your life, I want you to know Jesus made the statement. He said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You struggle with worry, you struggle with doubt, you struggle with addictions, you struggle with your marriage, you struggle with your kids, you struggle with finances, you struggle with whatever. Jesus is here to give you the victory. Now, I didn't say all that to say that God's going to prosper your life, that everything's going to be a bed of roses, and I don't believe in the, the prosperity gospel. God forbid I don't believe in that, and one day I'm going to preach a series on the prosperity gospel but I don't believe God's intended for you to be here and be rich and be wealthy and be, 
you know, live luxuriously and all these different things. Jesus said, I've come to give you life, but not just life, but life more abundant. Life is life, folks. Life is sickness. Life is bad health. Life is rotten kids. Life is... <laughs> not rotten kids. Kids that misbehave. Life is troubles in marriage. Life is all kinds of things. And Jesus said, I've come to help you and walk you through this life. And he will. God didn't come to make our life easy. He came to be our life. That's what he came to be. And so I hope and pray that if you're here this morning and you've never just let go and just grab a hold of Jesus, I pray you'll do that today. You'll never regret it. I'm 49. I wrapped my arms around Jesus when I was 23. I haven't let go since. And he's never let go of me. And he will never let go of you. All right, enough of that sermon. Okay. I'm starting a new series uh, starting today. And it's simply entitled, I Am the Church. Now you say there's a typo there because the letter I is lowercase. No, that's supposed to be lowercase. And there's a reason why, and I'll talk about that here in a little bit. But I want to talk about a series on I am the church. And what does it mean to belong to this church, or belong to, excuse me, a church? Um, I'm excited about teaching this series because I believe that many people have a misunderstanding about the church. Now, it's quite ironic that in the 10 years that I've been the pastor of this church, I have never preached on this subject. Isn't that weird? I've never preached on why belong to the church or why you are the church and, and just the whole church in, 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 uh, as a whole. I've had several conversations with different people um, in the past weeks and things that just kept striking up on... We need to learn about the church. We need to learn about why we are the church. Um, and, and the reason why I think we need to do this and understand this is because I believe that we live in an age of selfishness and consumerism. We do. Um, we live in an age where we want it our way, the way we want it. We, we want it just a certain way. And that's what we want. And unfortunately, it's crept its way inside the church. And I want to address that here um, in this series. But I've got two quotes that I want to read to you. And I thought these were very great. I was reading these. And, and uh, one of them is from Jeffrey McDonald. He's a pastor of the United Church of Christ. Uh, he's a journalist. Um, in his book, Thieves in the Temple, The Christian Church and the Selling of the American Soul, he wrote this. Listen to this. He says, faith has become a consumer commodity in America. People shop for congregations that make them feel comfortable rather than spiritually challenged. They steer clear of formal commitments to Christian communities. They flee when they are not quickly gratified or when they encounter interpersonal problems. Changing churches has become as a routine as changing jobs. And as a result, churches are no longer able to help people develop solid moral characters. I find that to be true. I mean, we see people all the time that are shopping for congregations. I, I talk to different people that, um, and I'm not talking about people that come to this church because you guys are perfect. <laughs> That's funny you laughed. Okay. But talking to people in this church and outside this church, um, just talking about church in general and what people are looking for. And people are shopping. People do shop. I've heard, I've heard phrases like, we're church shopping. I've heard that phrase. We are church shopping. Um, like, you know, people have an itch that they want someone to scratch and they'll go to a church till they find that certain church that's going to itch that scratch. Or scratch that itch, excuse me. Itch that scratch, there you go. Scratch that itch. Um, we're afraid of commitment. We're afraid of commitment and we've, we're afraid to commit to a community. Um, people flee when there's problems. Um, we all, 
all people, I think, do that. I mean, listen to this. Most of you know who George Barnett is. George Barnett is a Christian research researcher, and he said this. He said, we are a designer society. We want everything customized to fit our personal needs, our clothing, our food, our education. Now it's our religion. And I believe that's to be right. I believe George Barna and Jeffrey McDonald is right. We live in an age where people want to go to church and they want everything customized to fit their personal needs. And that's why we have so many churches around. I got in a discussion with a person um, the other week, uh, two guys, on what's the church for? Why do we have church? What is the church really here for? What, why did God institute the church? We have churches that, uh, there are churches all around. As a matter of fact, um, you have churches that are seeker-friendly. Um, and then you have churches that, you know, are more towards of what the Bible speaks of. Um, I have pastor friends of mine that I'm very close friends with that have churches that are designed specifically for all lost people to come in. Um, they do secular music. One Sunday um, they sang, um, I don't know, I think it was an Eagles song. Um, and it's driven to bring lost people into the building. Um, I know a pastor that did um, Highway to Hell on Easter Sunday uh, by AC, is ACDC, I think, or Ozzy Osbourne, one or the other. Um, either way, they're designed to those things. And, and all these things, and when I start thinking about this and these conversations I've had, it's like, what is the church for really? I mean, why, why are, are, are we here? You know, why did God design this? And then with those conversations along with others, I've, I've had conversations with other pastors of large churches. As a matter of fact, one large church here in Topeka. I spoke with him and we were discussing some different topics and I asked him a question about um, different things and he said, because I got about volunteers and, and I said, I'm, I'm curious, how do you deal with you know, volunteers in your church as far as how do you incorporate, how do you get them, to, how do you get people to sign up? And he said, it's amazing. He goes, and this is a church, a, a large church here in Topeka, and um, they run like well over a thousand. And he said, we actually have church that, people that come into this church, and they say, and they right up front with us, we don't want to be involved. We don't want to do anything. We just want to come to church here. Okay. Now, for a lot of you, probably, well, what's wrong with that? Well, I want to teach you in this series what the church is all about. Because I'm afraid in society we have Americanized church. We have made it into what we want church to be and how we want it to be because society plays a big factor on that of consumerism and selfishness and all that different stuff. And so therefore, I want to teach you guys on this subject of I am the church. And I'm going to go about this in several angles in talking about the church. Well, I came to the understanding, the reason why, because I question, you know, why this, why that, why this. You know, what causes the types of mindsets of people wanting to have things their way? What, what comes with the mindset of people being consumers in a church and selfish in a church? And it just hit me, it's because they've never been taught what it truly means to belong to a church. And so that's what this series is going to address. Now let me just talk about the church for just a moment. Now we're going to get in the Bible here in just a second, but let me just talk about the church. First of all, and for those of you that have heard this phrase before, um, just bear with me. But for those of you that may not know, number one, this place is not the church. This building is not the church. The church is not a denomination. The church is not these walls. The church is not this location. People will say, um, and you've heard this phrase, and maybe you've used this phrase. Um, I go to that church. I belong to that church. I go to the church at... You ever use those phrases? Now, I understand what you mean when you say those phrases. I, I truly get it, and I understand. But biblically, we need to understand that this is not the church. You are the church. You are the church. There's one thing that you're going to get across, uh, hopefully that I get across to you, that you're going to learn today 
is that you are the church. The church is actually a group of people. The word church is the Greek word ekklesia, and it means a called out people. So this is what it means. It means that if you've been called out by God and you have put your faith in Jesus Christ and you have received him as your Lord and Savior, you are the church. You were automatically birthed into, we call it the family of God. We call it the church of God. We even call it the body of Christ. And we'll look at this stuff here in just a moment here in Scripture. But in reality... You are the church. And you were brought into the church the moment you received Christ as your Savior. We are all connected in this church by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are the church. Do me this favor. Say, I am the church. Let's say it one more time. I want you to get that down. Every person who has been born again has become part of the church. You say, now wait a minute. What church? Where? See, our understanding of what church and where is Americanized to the fact that we think that church is a location and church is a denomination or church is a building. But you have to understand that you are the church. This isn't church, but this is where the church comes to worship. This place is not the body of Christ, but this is where the body of Christ comes to learn about God. Are you with me? The Bible clearly states that the church... Now turn with me to Ephesians chapter number 5. We're going to turn to a lot of scripture this morning. Ephesians 5 will be the first place we'll head to. <clears throat> Ephesians 5... I want you to notice that the church is defined in the Bible as being universal. By the term universal means it's invisible. It means all people. If I had a globe in my hand of the earth, and we were to take that globe, and all around the globe there were people who were saved because there are people saved in other parts of the world, correct? Okay. So if we were to take all those people out and draw them away from the earth, from the globe, and to put them in a group, that's the church. Do you picture that? Every person on this globe that is saved, if you were to pull them off the earth and bunch them together, that's the church. Now here's the thing. As we put them back on the earth, we're scattered all around the globe, but we're still the church. Okay? You are still the church. Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 25. <clears throat> Paul the Apostle is writing to the church at Ephesus. But notice what he says in verse number 25. Wives, submit to your own. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Just seeing if you're watching, seeing if you're reading your Bible. <laughs> Verse number 25, husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Who's he referring to? The church. Who did Jesus give his life for? Us. Every person around the globe... Jesus gave his life for the world that every person who receives him as his Savior is the church. Jesus Christ gave his life for the church. Notice in verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. Sanctify, cleanse her, sanctify, set apart. We talked about that in Wednesday night Bible study. Set apart to be holy, clean, washed. Verse 27, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church. Now remember, the word church means a called out people. We've been called out by God. For those of you that were on Wednesday night, we've been called out by God to be separate, right? First Peter says, 
but God's abundant mercy. He has begotten us again into a living hope, right? Which is a treasure laid up in heaven for us that fades not away. It's pure, everlasting, right? So here, the church, we have been called out of the world to be separate, to be different. And here he says, that's the church, he says, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. That's you. That's you. That's me. That's us. We are the church. Jesus died for us. He died for her. He re refers to the church in a feminine sense and says he died for her to present him to himself holy, without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. Verse 28, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. Does the Lord cherish all who are his? Even if they're in the Philippines, Dominican Republic, Africa, Egypt, Israel, China, Germany? Yes? Yes, we are the church. He says in verse 30, For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they too shall become one flesh. Verse 32, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. The church is universal, and by being universal means that it is invisible. When you received Christ, you became part of the universal or invisible church. So for those of you who are saved, you are the church. Say, I am the church. You are. You are the church wherever you are at. You're, you are the church when you're at home. You are the church when you're at work. You are the church when you're at the store. You are the church when you're at school. You never cease to exist being the church. A group of people who have been called out, separated by God, to be holy without spot and without blemish. You are the church. Do you get that? Amen. Okay. Three of you do. Okay. Big question. Big question. Because you are the church globally, universally, invisibly, I'm going to use the word globally. If you are the church globally, is it important for you to unite with the church locally? Is it important that you join and become a member of a local church? There are several reasons why it's important that you find a local church and become a member of it. And I'm going to give you some Bible. So this is what I'm going to do. For those of you, I know that this is a this is kind of hot topic with some people because I've heard the gamut. And a matter of fact, I've gotten a deep conversation, kind of heated conversation with an individual that was very adamant about you don't have to be a church member. Church Being a church member is not even biblical. It's not even in the Bible. If you belong to a church where they're saying you ought to be a member of that church, you ought to get out of that church. And I'm like, wait, wait. have you read your Bible? Can I show you, for those of you that may be here, you may be a little bit, well, I'm not in, you know, I'm not into the membership thing and I'm not into being a part of a church or joining a church and, you know, can I just, would you bear with me? I just want to show you the Bible. I don't want to show you me, I want to show you the Bible, right? And then at the end, I'm going to give you some Timology. You know what Timology is, right? Timology means it's coming from me, not the Bible, Right? So Timology, you can let go in one ear and out the other because it doesn't make a difference, right? But the Bible, that matters, right? We as followers of Jesus Christ follow the Word of God, right? Amen. Okay. 
Yes. <laughs> if you were a follower of Jesus Christ, we follow the Bible. We follow the Word of God. That is why we are called Lighthouse Bible Church, because we believe the Bible and we follow it. So look with me. I've got these verses on the screen behind me, and uh, you can turn to your Bibles because um, these will also be good for you to write these down and, and underline them. But Acts chapter 9, verse number 31. Acts 9, oh my, so much to say, so little time. I've been told several times, stop looking at the clock. Just preach. I know. But it's those adults that have your kids that i got to worry about. Because you guys don't see it, but right at about 1130, they are like running past that glass door, looking at me and screaming and waving their arms. No, they're not. I'm just kidding. They're not. But anyways, I, I try to be sensitive to them, and, and I know that when you're teaching kids, sometimes it seems like an eternity. <laughs> Hasn't he done yet? So I try to be mindful of that. So Acts chapter 9, verse number 31, I want you to notice, first of all, that the local church, it's biblical. It's very biblical. Again, I've met people, you, you'll hear this phrase, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. How many of you know that's true? Right? That's true. You don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Right? Be, being a Christian, a church is here to help you. And I'm going to get ahead of myself and I really don't want to do that. But we hear these phrases and this negativity of the church. And you don't need to be a part of that. You don't need to go there. You don't need to do this. But listen, you need to understand that the local church is very biblical. Acts chapter 9, verse number 31. Again, I have the verses on the screen with me. Um, but if you just turn to your Bibles, because those of you that mark your Bibles, would be good for you. So notice what he says. He says, <clears throat> Then the churches throughout all Judea, Gal Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified. And walking in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. The church is plural. So there must be some independent churches, some local visible bodies of people that were gathering together as a called out people. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse number 2. 1 Corinthians 1, 2 says, Paul is writing to the church at Corinth, and notice what he says. He says, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and saw things, our brother. Verse 2, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours. By the way, verse number 2, what Paul just said, that is how you become part of the church. Sanctified in Christ, called to be saints, who have called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to be their Lord. Boom. Birthed into the church. Universal, invisible, global, global, globally, if you will, global church. And so Paul says, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, there was a church in Corinth, a group of people that met together. Notice with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, same book. Just turn a couple pages to the right. Notice what Paul says in verse number 17. He says, verse 17, he says, For this reason I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful son in the Lord, who will remind you of my ways in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. It'd be totally impossible for Paul to say, as I teach the church. That's just totally impossible. And, and I'll kind of reiterate more on that here in just a little bit. But Paul was saying that he was teaching everywhere in every church. Again, the word church there means a called out people that have been called out together. Okay? So the church not only means universal, but the church also means local. 1 Corinthians 16, same book. A couple pages over to the right. 
Look at chapter 16 and verse number 19. Paul continues to use this phrase and talks about, verse 19, the churches of Asia greet you. These individual local bodies of people greet you, Aquila and Priscilla greet you hardly in the Lord, with the church locally that is in their what? House. Yeah, they met house to house. They did both. They met house to house. They had temples that they met in. And here the church was local. Let me give you the last one. Galatians chapter number 1. Keep turning to the right. Corinthians, Revelations, Galatians. I know, I'm just still seeing if you're awake. Galatians 1, verse number 1. Paul again, talking to a church, he said, and he writes this letter, he says, Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God our Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren who are with me to the churches of Galatia. Paul is writing to local churches in Galatia. So we see through the New Testament that the local church is biblical, right? You, you can't get away from it. The Bible clearly states that the church is local. There is such a thing as the local church. Forgive me, my phone went off. I was like, please do not call me. I make sure I shut it off. Sorry. So the church biblically is both global, but it's also local. People met in groups together in multiple places. Just like we're meeting right here on the corner of 62nd and Highway 75 in this building that was built for the church to meet in. This isn't the church, but this is where the church comes together to learn, to worship, to encourage, to strengthen, to serve, to minister. Are you with me? Okay. So, let's talk about not only is the church, the local church, biblical, but here's a really good point, and this is going to be the last thing I'm going to talk about this morning, because I've got a ton of stuff in this series, and I'm going to talk to you about the local church and and why it's important. And that is, and I don't think any of you may have seen this before. Um, I know God just brought this to my attention as I was getting this together. And I've never, you know, I've said this before. You know how you can read the Bible. And then you'll come across some scripture and you'll go, oh my goodness. I've never seen it like that before. And that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you as he brings things out. And here's the other thing. The local church reflects the image of Jesus Christ. The local church reflects the image of Jesus Christ. Now stick with me. Romans chapter 12. For sake of time, let me just use the verses on the screen. Write these down though because these will be good for you. Romans 12 verse 4 and 5. For as we have many members, Paul was saying to the church at Rome, for as we have many members in one body, but all the members, and by the way, I'll be referring to several scriptures multiple times, the same scripture, because there's so much in depth into those. I want to make sure we pull all the meat out of those things so I can give you biblically, not my definition and not my view, but biblically what the church is. And you want that, right? Bible. But all the members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Here's another scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. Paul said, now you are the body of Christ and members individually. Ephesians chapter number 4, verses 11 and 12, Paul said, and he himself gave some to be apostles uh, and some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the, what church? The body of Christ. Now when the Bible says that the local church is the body of Christ, what it's saying is, is that when the local church comes together, when we choose to belong or connect with or become a part of 
a body of believers locally, visibly, we have now become a picture or a reflection of Jesus Christ. That's why I said you are the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. The local church is a reflection of Christ. Now, some are going to say, and I already know this because um, I are one. Now, wait a minute. Doesn't the body of Christ also refer to the global church? Yes, it does. It refers to both. The local, or excuse me, the word church refers both to globally and locally. And the body of Christ also refers to universal or global and local. But here's what you need to remember. The universal church is invisible. The local church is visible. I'm going to say that again. The universal church is invisible. The local church is visible. Now, can the invisible have an impact on the visible? In other words, can the invisible church have an impact on the visible world? And what I mean by that, as people are looking to the church or looking at the church, can an invisible or global church have an impact on the world that is visible, that is looking at the church? Yes. Here's with that. The universal church does have an impact on the visible world, but to only some degree. To only some degree. But I believe the visible local church that the world can see will have a much more impact than the invisible church the world can't see. And I'm going to give you an illustration. This is one I thought up that God gave me. So I'm hoping that it makes sense to you, okay? You have a community of a thousand people. In that community, you have ten people who have given their lives to Jesus Christ. They have been saved. Those 10 people belong to the universal church. Now, these 10 people do not gather together, so they don't know who each other is, who they are. So all 10 people have no idea who one another are. But there are 10 people who are saved in this community of 1,000 people, okay? So because they don't know who each other is, they don't know how to pray for one another. They can't serve one another. They have no idea how to minister to one another. Um, here's these 10 people because they don't meet. They don't know who each other is. Why? Because they're a part of the invisible church. Now, can these 10 people have an effect or can these um, 10 people have an impact on the 1,000 people in the community? Yes, they can. They can definitely have an impact on the community. But that impact would be small. Now you take those 10 people, put them together to form a local church, and now you have the community that can truly see what Jesus looks like. Does that make sense? They truly see now the visible body of Jesus in the local church. So we know that the local church is the body of Christ and that the body of Christ is a reflection of Christ. What does the church do to reflect Christ? This is it. Loving the lost, serving the needy, giving to the poor, ministering to the hurting. That's what the local church does. That's what Jesus did, right? That is a picture of Jesus. You say, give me a word for Jesus. People say, love. Give me another uh, a verb. Is that, no, a, what is the word to describe someone? Adverb, adjective? Adjective? Okay, for all you English people. It's a noun. No, it's adjective. What, what was he? He was serving. Is that an adjective? I don't know if that's wrong. I'm not an English person, so please forgive me. But when I think of Jesus, I think, man, he served. He loved he ministered. He gave. Those are verbs, right? Okay. 
I failed English 101 in college. I did, seriously. I had to take it twice. I was so angry. But that's Jesus. That's a picture of Jesus. And that's also what the church does. We love the lost. We serve the needy. We give to the poor. We minister to the hurting. Now I know that many of you are already saying, now wait a minute. I can do that without being a part of the church. Very true. You may be saying, I can do all those things without the local church. I don't need to be a part of a local church to do those things. And that is very, very true. But the question is, how many Christians truly do this outside of the church? Now, there are some, right? But how many of you would be honest and say that you truly never did these things till you became a part of a local church? True. The truth is for many, many, many people, true believers in Jesus Christ, those who are the church, the global universal church, have never done these things until they came and became a part of and connected to and became a member of a local visible body of believers. Then they began to do these things. Now, I'm not saying that there's all of you here that... that None of you here ever did these things outside of the local church because there's probably some of you that have. But the majority, I'm talking about the majority, usually happens in the local church. You are the church. Say, I am the church. And we've seen two things so far this morning why you should belong to the local church. Number one, it's biblical. You notice that in the New Testament, and I just touched on some scripture. I mean, there's so much scripture that addresses the local church. Church discipline, and Jesus talked about it in Matthew, and just all these different things, and we'll get into that later. But it seems that when an individual became a part of the global church, the universal church, it, we assume that that individual then seeks out and finds and connects to a local church. And there's many reasons why, and I'll get those at, a, at the next sermon next Sunday. The second thing is, is we know that the church reflects Jesus Christ. And you reflect Christ more when you're a part of the local church as you do in the universal church. Not to say that you don't ever reflect Christ because we do. We are the church whether we're at home, work, everything like that. But the world always looks at the church. Hardly does anybody ever say, that Christian over there is a hypocrite. No, what they say is that church is full of. Who do they see? Not you. They see a church. They see this building. They see this place that we come together. Usually problems and all that that the world looks at to and wants to be negative towards and tries to, and, and they see this. It's not in individuals. It's in a church the people that hold up signs here in Topeka who are they who are they what's the name of their church Westboro Baptist Church when people refer to Fred Phelps who do they refer to Westboro Baptist Church a church the world that sees everything visibly is how they judge, how they see, how they react, how they respond, how they experience. The world is all through this. The local church is what's doing what Jesus did. The local church 
is the reflection of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to get more deeper into that as a member of the church and how that even in a deeper sense what we do in the church is even more a reflection of Jesus. So I pray that you will stick around and be a part of this series. Would you do me a favor? We're going to sing. Is that correct? All right. Would you stand to your feet? We're going to sing a song and and uh, I want to give you an opportunity. I talked about being a part of the local church. and Maybe you've been here and, and you've been coming here for a long time and you've been visiting for a long time. You go, you know what? It's time I connect, join, become a part of, however you want to call it, of this local, visible body of Christ. And if you don't join today, that's okay. I'm hoping that you'll stick around and listen to this series, that by the end of this series, you will see biblically that for your best interest, the local church is here for you. The local church, the visible body, a group of believers that have gathered together in this building, are here for your best interest. It's not what we can get out of you, but it's what we can give to you. You say that again. It's not what we can get out of you. It's what we can give to you. I hope you will see that through this series. So as we sing this, if you want to come to know Christ as your Savior, you come. If you want to join this church, come. Whatever the Holy Spirit is asking you to do, if you need to be baptized, you've been saved, you've never been in the waters of baptism to show your Christianity, your faith in Christ, publicly profess, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. I pray that you will come. Let me pray with you. Please do this as we sing. Let's sing.